excited to be in the house of God this Mother's Day. It doesn't matter if it's Mother's Day or not, but I'm still excited. Hey Amen. Happy, happy Mother's Day, mamas. Amen. Hey man, you know, I had, uh, yesterday I, I posted a, a picture on Facebook with me and my mama. And uh, my mother, she passed away when I was 14. That was an old black and white picture. I said, man, Prince, you ain't that old. I'm old enough. <laughs> but anyway, mom, I was standing there with my mama, and she, you know, it looked like we had just got out of church or something like that. And my mom was standing there with a switch in her hand. <laughs> and I had <laughs> And I, and I shared in that, in that picture, I said, you know, uh, my mom was old school. You know, she was old school. She ra ra raised us right in church. But I said, um, you see that switch in her hand? I put it down there. I said, you don't see me moving, do you? <laughs> and sometimes we had to go out. <laughs> sometimes we had to go outside and get our own switch. But anyway, y'all don't know nothing about that. Yeah, yeah if y'all ain't. I had a mama. She was, from, she was from Mississippi. And, you know, she, uh, I, I'm not ashamed. She whooped us. You know, we had got a line of wherever we got our behind whipped. So, and it wasn't child abuse back then. Amen. You know, try calling 911. She'll whoop you in front. She'll whoop you in front of the police. <laughs> I'm thankful to be here this morning. Thankful that the Lord is still um, on the throne. That He's still on the throne of each one of our lives. Thankful for mothers today. You know, if it wasn't for a mother, you wouldn't be here to sit in this pew. Amen. Sister Wall said something good for the Lord this morning. Amen. Yes, yeah, while she came home. She said, we had a great time. All these women showed up where? And I said, mm-hmm. I, tell, tell, I said, tell all those women that they better be in church in the morning. <laughs> and she did. She did. But, you know, uh, Father's Day is coming up, men. And uh, uh, so, so I told my wife, I said, I asked Sister Walls, I said, you know, I said, I'm not real good at uh, and putting things, you know, like together, you know, like you put it together. She said, "Leave it to the committee." She said, "We're we're we're uh, put it together for you know, just get the men together, and whatever." So men, uh, Father's Day coming up that Saturday before we we're gonna meet here. Amen. Amen. Uh, invite your friends. You know, I ain't talking about going down uh, somewhere and getting somebody. Oh yeah, who this year, man? Come on, man. You ain't no father, but um, <laughs> invite fathers. <laughs> invite fathers. Amen. 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 So. Um, be much in prayer uh, for that. I'm thankful for everyone that's here um, this morning. Amen. Don't forget our, our service times. Um, we are here um, tonight at 6.30. Tonight at 6.30. So who's coming back to church at 6.30, preacher? You, if you come. Come back at 6.30. Two times in church on Sunday? That's what I thought. Um, when I was a kid, um, when I was a kid, uh, I was raised up in, in church, and um, when we got to church, you know, it was about, 9, 9.30, and um, we ate we ate breakfast at the church. We had Sunday school. We uh, got out of Sunday school, and we had to come to the front pew and, uh, and stand up uh, before the church service started and, and tell the people what we learned in Sunday school. I may have to do that here. <laughs> and uh, so we had church. Um, right before the church service started, we went back downstairs and ate again. Mm -hmm. And then we had church. And then we didn't get out of church until about 2, 30, 3 o'clock. And so when I got older, I said, I ain't going back to church. I said, and so when people invited me to church, I thought, hey, would you like to come to church with me? And in my mind, I was like, I'm going to be there all day. Nope, nope, <laughs> nope. So I never, I never even um, imagined I'd become a preacher. Now I'm inviting people to church. But I'm sharing, you ain't going to be here for no 3 to no 3 o'clock. 
Not even 2 o'clock. Amen? Amen? So, well, why wait? we not here all day long, preacher? I came on Sunday morning. Hey, it don't take God all day long to, to get a message to you. you know, our God is able to touch your heart this morning with a single touch. And I'm thankful for that this morning. Amen. So we're here at 6 30, 6.30 tonight, also 6.30 on uh, Tuesday evening Bible study. We're here at um, 6.30. Also Thursday evening uh, midweek service, we're here at 6.30. And also we're here at noon, 12, 12 noon on Saturday. Saturday. We're praying. I have a prayer meeting on Saturday. It usually lasts for about a half hour. And then um, we go out and um, encourage men and women to be in the house of God on Sunday morning. Man, so if you would like to come to any of those services, come. Say, so, well, how can I join this church, preacher? Just come. Amen. You ain't got to sign no uh, 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 right hand of fellowship papers or nothing like that. Just come to church. Amen. That's, That's right. the, you're, you're giving the right hand of fellowship Amen. to him. Amen? Amen. Amen. What else have we got? Uh, what else announcements that I have here? Um. If you look around this morning, you don't see you see someone that's not here, pray for them. Amen. Pray for them. You say, well, what's going on with them? Pray for them. You know, there's a lot of things going on in people's lives, and um, I may not know, you may not know, but it's always good to pray for one another. Right. You are your brother's keeper. Yes, Man, so lift them up in prayer. When I say lift them up in prayer, call them out by name. Call them out by name and, and begin to Lift their name up to heaven so that the Lord can hear your prayer. God answers prayer. Hello? If you don't know God answers prayer, you ain't prayed. God answers prayer. So all we have to do is lift him, lift whatever we need up to heaven. The need that he, because he said he will supply all our need according to his riches. Not our riches. Not your own riches, but his riches. And the Bible, my Bible tells me that my God owns a cattle on a thousand hills. And not only a thousand hills, he owns all the hills. So if that's the case, the Lord will meet your need according to his riches. So pray. Lift up men and women of the congregation here at New Testament Christian Church and see the Lord move. Amen. At this time, we're going to receive an offering as the brother will come and help us. Brother Josh, come and help us. You give as unto the Lord, and the Lord will richly bless you. And all Christians do pay tithe. Hello? I'm not afraid to say that. And cheerfully give in offerings. You know, I'm, um, I'm a firm believer when I was a young Christian, uh, a young pastor. I was afraid to share anything about finances because I was afraid that people thought I was preaching for money. But as you get older, you don't care what people think. You just do what the Lord says, says in his word. And share that with individuals and people um, with the help of the Lord will do what the word of God shares. Amen. Brother, could you just pray? Our loving Father, once again, we're grateful to be in your house this morning on this Sunday morning. And God, we thank you for this time to be able to give unto you, God. We just ask that you to bless the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 for your giving, the Lord will richly bless you. Uh, if you came in and looked at the back table, 
Um, we got something for all the mamas today. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Text uh, some folks this morning that say, hey, come. Come uh, this morning uh, with your wife. And, uh, you know, we want the uh, husbands or the children to give um, them the Mother's Day gift this morning. Amen. So um, we appreciate all y'all mamas. Amen. I can't talk too much about mamas because I probably start crying. Amen. But, um, you know, I mean, because I love my mother. Amen. Everybody loves it. This time, Sister Walls and Sister Sam's gonna sing a special song. <clears throat>
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All my life, he's been faithful. Hello? All, I say, say, all our lives, each one of our lives, he's been so, so good. With every breath that I'm able, I'm going to sing. I'm going to throw in this. I'm going to preach of the goodness of God. Because our God is good. I can't say a bad thing about God this morning. And you can't either. You say, well, you know, I've been praying and it's nothing to happen or whatever. Wait. Wait upon the Lord. You know, last night I was, uh, as I was doing this, um, this sermon last night, I was just sitting down in front of the computer and I was like, man, just waiting. Just waiting. Three hours waiting. So this, this, this sermon this morning is from the Lord this morning. We're going to be in, a Pro, in Proverbs chapter 31 and verse 1. Two verses of scripture. Proverbs chapter 31 and verse 1. It says, The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. And also Proverbs chapter 31 verse 30. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. And I'd like to preach with the help of the Lord this morning on a thought or message titled, The God-Fearing Woman. Hello? The God-Fearing Woman. Brother Josh, could you please pray the message you message this morning, please? I love you, Father. We thank you for your presence here in this service. And God is prepare our hearts to receive your message. God, we just ask that you would cultivate it this morning in a special way. God, you know each and every one of us in this service this morning. You know where we're living at. You know where we're at in you. And you know exactly what we have need of. And God, as each and every one of us comes to you in this service, God, we look forward to what we're about to hear. We look forward to your grace and your mercy. And God, we just ask that you would touch pastor and make preaching easy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The God-fearing woman. Man, preacher, what kind of message is this? It's a good message. I want to say happy Mother's Day. Hello? Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. <laughs> I want to start off by saying this morning that a woman who fears the Lord will not run away from the things of the Lord. They will run to the Lord. She will wait for the Lord. She will hope in the Lord. Amen. Y'all will help me preach this morning? It don't matter if you do or not. I'm going to preach anyway. She will stay close to the heart of God and trust in his word and promises. In Psalm chapter 34, verse 7, it says, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Also, Psalm chapter 103 and verse 11, it says, For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. The promises God makes to those who fear him are so overwhelming that the command to fear him and to call to hope in him are inseparable. Put down here, the psalmist puts together, he puts uh, the two together. And he says in Psalm chapter 33 in verse 18, Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy. In Proverbs chapter 31 in verse 1 says the words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. That his mother taught him. Then said the father. Hello? So, well, well preacher, I'm a father. Uh, you know, you, you need to say something about me. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. It said the prophecy that his mother taught him. We have no way of knowing who King Lumiel was. His name means dedicated to God or belonging to God. The important thing is that he has preserved for us in the word of God the wise counsel which his mother, which his mama taught him. And it says in the second verse in Proverbs chapter 31 and verse 2, What, my son, and what, the son of my womb, 
and what the son of my vows. His mother was saying to him, what shall I say to you? And what type of wisdom will I pass on to you, my son, whom I have dedicated to the Lord? You know, as, as a, a young man growing up, um, looking back on my uh, mom and my, father, my mother and my father's relationship, it wasn't really uh, too good. You know, growing up in a household, I had older parents. My, my, my mother and father were old enough to be my grandparents. Because they had us when they was past 40. So my dad died. He was almost 100. But growing up, they were old people. And they grew up, they uh, raised us <laughs> in the old school way. You couldn't talk around with grown-ups. You couldn't do it. I couldn't even look in the refrigerator. You ain't buy that food. <laughs> anyway, y'all know nothing about that. And so when I, when I got older and, and tried to... Uh, um, put those same things upon our children. My wife said, what are you doing, honey? We ain't raising our kids like that. That ain't right. And it wasn't right. To this day, I don't even know why my dad said, uh, don't look in the refrigerator. Well, you know, he, said, he said, you ain't buy the food, so I understood that. And the next three verses, here in Proverbs chapter 31, she started talking about women and wine. Mm -mm. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 3 through 5, it says, Give not thy strength unto women. And this was his mama was telling him. Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. Verse 4, it is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes to drink strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. So you in here that's drinking. <laughs> what are you trying to say, preacher? <laughs> this mama was telling her son to be careful about yielding himself to women and not to go the way that destroys kings. What destroys kings? Women and wine. Mm-hmm, God. I can't believe I'm in church. This preacher's saying something about women and wine. No. Now, I may not be that old. And I'm, I'm old. I'm older than most people here. No, you're not. I may look kind of young, but <laughs> I'm thankful. You know, I'm thankful that I came to the Lord young, at a young age. In my early 20s. Because when I was doing back there in, in my late uh, teens, in my early 20s, uh, if I wouldn't have stopped what I was doing, I probably wouldn't be standing behind this podium this morning. Women and wine. The danger for kings is that their ability to judge and to make proper decisions might be impaired by drinking. This is Mother's Day, preacher. Stay on the mamas. I'm going to stay on track. Just want to throw that in there. Men, if you're in here and you're like, well, my, my uh, 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 judgment is not impaired by alcohol, quit lying to yourself. Quit lying to yourself. If you are a king, which most of us say, I'm a king, quit drinking. See how quiet it is? No, I didn't come to church to hear that. Well, I'm coming. I'm coming. In Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 8, I'm going to leave that alone. It says, You already heard enough. My son, Hear the instruction of thy father. Oh, there you go, fathers. And forsake not the law of thy mother. Hear the instruction of thy father, but forsake not the law of thy mother. Many great men of the past have been richly blessed by what they learned at their mother's knee. Amen. Hello? Amen. Consider Moses. Consider Samuel. Consider uh, the young man Timothy in the New Testament. The care and godly, I put down here, influence experienced by these spiritual leaders bore rich fruit in their lives. All because they listened to their mama. Mm -hmm. In Proverbs chapter 31 and verse 10, it says, who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above 
rubies. A virtuous woman is one who is capable, diligent, worthy, godly, and good. Her worth cannot be measured in terms of costly jewels. Okay? Her husband can have full confidence in her with no need to fear any lack of honesty. Her finest efforts are put forth to help him. Think about it now, man. Got a wife sitting in there. Her efforts is to help you. Mm -hmm. But what about me? <laughs> what about you? King? Some people have the mistaken, they're mistaken to put down here that the ideal woman in the Bible is shy, submissive, and entirely domestic. Now, this woman here in the Bible is an excellent wife and mother. She is a manufacturer, put down here. She's an importer, a manager, a realtor, hello, a farmer, a seamstress, an upholsterer, and a merchant. Her strength and her dignity did not come from her achievements, though. Okay? I'm going to share, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a share something with y'all this morning. They're, they were a result of her reverence and her devotion to her God. Okay? Now, her God wasn't her husband. Hello? In our society, where physical uh, appearance counts for so much, it may surprise you this morning to realize that the word of God, right here, uh, uh, chapter, uh, Proverbs chapter 31, that the word of God never mentioned her appearance. Mm -hmm. Can I say that one more time? No, just keep going, Pastor. It never mentioned how she looked on the outward. Mm, I am coming. So that that play that goes both ways. Women, I, I know you want to look good for some man or whatever this and that, but you know something? Mm, man, press pass. I ain't never heard you preach like this before. <laughs> it's what's inside. It's what's inside. Well, you know, you I want the full package. I want the the outer look and whatever. It's the full. It's it's what's inside. Okay, kings. Mm -hmm. What you looking for? Her attractiveness came entirely from her character. He a pin drop here tonight. In Proverbs chapter 31, verse 30 and 31, it says, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. I'm not going to go into the qualities of the virtuous woman this morning here in Proverbs chapter 31. But I do want to say uh, and mention of a woman who fears the Lord brings back the theme of the book of Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 7. In Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 7, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instructions. A lot of people don't want to come to church because they don't want, to, they, they don't want the mirror of the word of God to help them see themselves. It reminds us that this woman excels in her fear of the Lord and therefore that she is a model of the character traits and wisdom taught throughout the book of Proverbs chapter 31. Now, if you want to know uh, how you, uh, how, or how the woman, how you need to be before the Lord, read Proverbs chapter 31. Hello? This 
this woman's fear of the Lord is also a reminder that this quality is more important than even great skill and talent. A godly woman may well have outward charm and beauty, but those are only secondary, just secondary to her godliness. Hello? It's Mother's Day now. You know, looking back, you know, I ain't even just never doing this sermon. Looking back, you know, it's, it's a lot of young mothers. My mom was old, and I, I believe that um, when I was raised, they they raised me um, with the old ways, old school switches and, and house shoes and stuff like that, you know. But nowadays, you know, it seems like sometimes the, the young women with kids, some you know, they uh, they want to try to. Uh, get their own life uh, straight, and they probably leave the kids on the background. Now, my mom, you know, I, I grew up. My mom, my dad, he worked, and my mom, she uh, um, stayed at home until we got out of school. We weren't rich, okay? We grew up in a black neighborhood with black, <laughs> with black policemen, black mailmen, black preachers. Everybody was black. But, you know, they, they taught us, you know, uh, to listen. I said, why? Because they knew that um, if you didn't listen, that you was going to get in trouble later on in your life. If you don't listen to your parents, you ain't going to listen to the police. Are we here? Preach, it. Preach the Bible. I am preaching the Bible. The Bible says train up a child in the way they should go. When they're old, they won't depart from it. My children aren't in this church this morning. One lives in St. Louis, married with a, with a grandchild, and the other one's in Chicago right now. What are you doing in Chicago? Probably was partying last night. I don't know. I'm not, I don't know. But I did text him and say, hey, surprise your mama this morning to come to church. He said, I can't, Dad. I'm in Chicago. So what are you saying? I'm saying that we trained up our children the way they should go. When they're old, they won't depart from it. My son told me, my youngest son that's in Chicago, he said, we know what's right, Dad. And he keep telling us, all these young people, Dad, they just, I saw my friend the other day, you know, uh, he, he, uh, his, he was cursing at his mom and dad. He said, boy, if I would have said that to y'all, I would have been, been peeling off the sheetrock. I said, you right, son. A woman may be beautiful but impossible to get along with. But a woman who fears the Lord, as described in Proverbs chapter 31, is the best kind. Okay, now, I don't, I don't you know, sometimes I don't, I don't share a lot about my wife, you know, because, uh, and if I do share something about it, it's going to be in a good light. Hello. No, I ain't got to say it better be. No, I ain't got to say that. Because um, my pastor told me one time, he said, if you talk bad about your wife, that reflects on you. He said, you married her. And I was like, and I was like yeah, he right. So I'm not going to talk bad about my wife here. My, I have a great wife. A great wife and a mother. You know, my wife, um, my wife and Sister Samson and, and Sister Tiffany, all, they got together yesterday and put all that stuff together for you, you mothers out there. The deal is, we want all the mothers to participate. Text some folks today and share, hey, come back to church. I got something for the mothers today so, so that the children and the father, whatever, they can give to the mothers today. We want to take a Mother's Day photo to give to you. So you remember this Mother's Day. Because it's special. You are special. Okay? Now, my, son, my sons may not be here for their mom this morning. But my, my wife knows that she's special to them. Amen? I know you, brother. Amen. See? Mm -hmm. I texted him this morning. <laughs> Glad he's here. He listened. He listened to the Spirit of God. There's other folks that's here. They listen to the Spirit of God. Amen. Praise God. And you know, that's encouraging, too. That's encouraging. Woman who fears the Lord is the best kind. So if you got a wife, a significant other 
that is serving the Lord, you're blessed. You're blessed. Don't take it for granted. Looking back on me and Sister Walls' life before we uh, came to the Lord, we were going in two separate directions. She did her own thing, I did my own thing, and it seemed like uh, we, we wouldn't be married today. But when I, came to, when I came to Jesus, Jesus is the glue that keeps both of us together. This ain't Father's Day, but husbands, hey. The, the glue with your wife, your godly wife, it may be on one side, but hey, fathers, you be the other glue to keep y'all together tightly. Hello? This is Mother's Day, Pastor. Keep on going. It takes two. Okay? Now, um, I can honestly say, and um, I don't have to tug tail, that I, I have a successful marriage. And it's only because of Jesus Christ. Who are we without Christ? Okay? It takes two. Sister Walls, she's doing her uh, thing with the word of God and, and, and allowing the spirit of God to touch her heart to do what the Lord wants her to do. And the man, hello, can't leave you out. Same way you're doing what the Lord wants you to do out of the word of God. It takes more than finances. He had. It takes more than finances and sex. Mm -hmm. What do you got? Is that all you got? It takes a two people that are godly. Not one person doing their own thing and the, and the wife doing the next other thing. and, and uh, No. That's not even in my message this morning. Let the woman or the mother be honored for her thoughtfulness and her upright character. Can you make it easy for them, husband? Can you make it easy for your wife to serve the Lord? Instead... <laughs> You're supposed to be a godly woman. Don't uh, you can't talk to me like that. Aren't you supposed to be a godly man? Mm hmm Praise God, I ain't coming back to this church. <laughs> the Bible says to know the truth. And the truth show. Yeah, make you free. Mothers, stand firm on honoring the Lord on honoring the Lord with your life. Regardless of what goes on in your household, stand firm. Remember this Mother's Day message. Remember what Pastor said? We're supposed to work together, husband. Who cares about what that pastor say? You don't have to, you don't have to listen to what I'm saying. Thank you. See, she said, but you better listen to God. Better listen to the Lord. He led each one of us here. The Spirit of the Lord led us here for one purpose and one purpose only, and that is to draw near to him. I'm praying, Pastor. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. It ain't my mama, it ain't my sister, it ain't my brother. Lord is me. I'm praying this morning. You know, the greatest Mother's Day present that you can give your wife is to get on your knees and pray with her. Hello! <laughs> to pray with her. You ever pray with your wife? I prayed one day. Oh, Lord, I need, I need you to do this, God. Have you ever prayed for your wife? This ain't Father's Day, but we're going to get to that when Father's Day comes. I know I ain't coming now. <laughs> but you know, it was, um, I saw some um, video from the, uh, the uh, Women's Day um, brunch, and it was a blessing. You know, some, uh, some of you here spoke there, and, and um, I saw some pictures, and um, I was like, wow. I said, us men need to step up. Hello? You know, you know, not, you know, a lot of men, you know, got pride with, you know, like, you know, I ain't got time for that, preacher. You know, wow, you know. But hey, 
we do have time. We have to make time. You know, if you think back and if your grandparents or your mama, they made time for you. You know, my mom, she made time for me. I don't talk about my mother a lot, but, you know, growing up, you know, she, she was older. She made time for us. You know, I remember uh, we uh, were playing baseball in the backyard of our house, and I was a hand catcher. I was about seven or eight. And I had the little glove and whatever this and that. And my dad, he pitched the ball. And my mom hit the ball, and she swung the bat and knocked out all my front teeth. <laughs> if, if you saw younger pictures of me, I had a gap in my teeth. Me and my, I'm a, a, a twin. Got a twin sister. She passed away in 2007, though. But um, we both had gaps in our teeth. But my teeth grew back straight. And I'll never forget that. After, that. after that day, my mama, she took me in the house and whatever, and I can remember uh, laying on my mother's bosom after that day. You know, she was comforting me because I lost all my front teeth. <laughs> no, my mama didn't beat me down. Okay. My mama, she did uh, whoop me. I don't know, this is not me. I'm going to go close. She whooped me. But you know something? It was, but my dad whooped me more. When your daddy get home, I'm going to tell him. You know, when your mama tells you, you're going to tell your dad, you know, you want to be good, good all day long, you know, so she'll forget. But she don't forget. Yo. Mother, stand firm and honor the Lord with your life because your household is watching you. Your household is watching you. Okay? Your house, you know, think about it when you was growing up. If you ever grew up in church or whatever, you know, I always, uh, I grew up in church and the church had a lot of old people in there. You know, I was young. You didn't ever think about uh, what goes on in the church, wherever it is now. You just went to church because you're, your parents sent you there or you got caught the church bus or whatever, you know. But as I got older, um, it's young people here, you know, and older people too, whatever this and that, but it's more younger people than older people. And sometimes people think, oh, yeah, I'm just going to say this. It's not my message. Oh, yeah, you know, the church, you know, just keep on going on. But who you think kept the church going on back then? <laughs> the older people. You done got older. Okay? <laughs> you older. You're the one that keeps the church going on. Hello? Amen. Thought I'd throw that in there. Amen. But mamas, continue to live your life in front of those that are watching you. Be godly. Watch what comes out of your mouth. Because whoever you're with, they're watching you. Not only the man, but your children are watching you. You know, I always say, somebody's watching you. <laughs> they're watching you. And why are they watching you? Because they want you to be different than someone else. Even you fathers, your children, your grandchildren, they want you to be different from someone else. They don't want you to be like someone. They want you to be like That's who I am. My grandkids call me Pop Pop. They want you to be dad. They want you to be different. Why? Because they look up to you. You know, if you set your child on the ground, they, they look up to you. Everything you do, you like the jolly green giant. This is uh, my Pop Pop. This is my grandpa. Or this, this is us. Or, or my son. You know, they look up to you. So whatever you do, it makes an impression on them. So remember, you're here. Hello! You know why I did that? Because I, I don't know, but you know, it's a, it's a guy here. He, he works at, at night. Just want to make sure he's woke. He ain't sleep, okay? He ain't sleep. Yeah. You know. Just got to put that in there. But, but he's here this morning. That speaks. Man work all night long, but he's here on a Sunday morning. Hello? I'm going to interject this and I'm going to close. Call him back, bro. 
I'm going to interject this and I'm going to close. Say anything about mothers. Men, you need to step up. Don't want to, amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. See, and the person that said amen, he stepped up. He's, a, he's stepping up. <laughs> and I'm saying, man, you need to step up and help your wife in this thing. It'll be easier for both of you. Amen? Amen. Praise God. It's a good crowd this morning. What else is there to say? Solomon said, what's the whole conclusion of the matter? He said, fear God. Fear God and keep his commandments. That's the whole duty of man. That's that's why he created us, to give him the glory and the praise. You know, help each other. Godly woman, live your life godly with character because men look past. And don't, don't get me wrong now. They look at the beauty, but they look past that. They want, you know, I don't, don't want to be with her. Her attitude is like Cardi B. Mm-hmm. No, really. I'm just telling the truth. God's looking, and men are looking. You know, men are looking for someone that, hey, I want a God. You know, why do, women, why do men come to church? That's right. Men come to church. They want to look for a, a wife or a, woman, a future wife. So they may look, you know, I, I don't know, I'm just going to man rambling on. But most of what they're looking for, they're looking for, thank you, character. Character. Looking for character so that individuals, when they find the one of that pearl of great price, it will help them. So whatever you're doing, Make sure you're a woman that fears God. And when I say fear, that means reverence. His, his words. And apply it to your life. That's what separates the men from the boys. Applying the word of God to your life. There's a lot of people want to say, oh, I'm a Christian, I'm, a, I'm this and I'm that. But do you apply the word of God to your life? Help each other. Single woman, single mom out there, pray for your children. Pray for your children. Nurture them in the admonition of the Lord. Help them to grow up to be what the Lord wants them to be. Amen? And with that, we're going to close in prayer. Let's all bow our heads this morning, close our eyes in reverence to the Lord this morning. Thank you, Jesus. The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Dear Heavenly Father, we're thankful this morning, God, knowing that this service did not last long, God. But God, you know how to touch the very heart and the soul of many women that you've created. We ask this morning, God, that you would do just that. Help each one, God, to draw closer to you this morning. Help us all, Lord, on this Mother's Day, Lord, to make this day special. And God, help us, help all of us, Lord, to look to you this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, I'm thankful this, I'm thankful this morning, Lord, for your word. I, I preached what you wanted me to preach. I said exactly what you wanted me to say. I was not afraid. And God, I ask that you would do that which I can't do this morning. And that is to bring men and women closer to you this morning. Help them accomplish your divine holy will. And God, help every mother here, Lord. Lord, to be godly. To be godly, Lord, not only to their children, but to their husbands. And to that future husband, Lord, that they're looking to. Lord, to, to place your word and to be evident 
in their hearts and their lives so that people would know we're true that they have been with you. If you're here this morning, you say, Preacher, pray for me. I don't know you. I probably never met you, but I do want to pray for you this morning. Don't want to embarrass you in any shape, form, or fashion. But I want to pray for you this morning. If you desire prayer, why don't you slip up your hands and slip it right back down. God bless all those hands. You may put them down this morning. The Lord not only sees your hands, most of all, he sees your heart. The Bible says he does not look at the outward appearance, but he looks at the heart. He looks deeper. Dear Heavenly Father, touch the very heart of those that are here this morning. One more time, if you desire prayer this morning, why don't you slip up your hands, slip it back, back down. God bless those hands. You may put them down this morning. With no one looking around this morning, you lifted up your hand, won't you come to the front of this church? I won't embarrass you this morning. No one looking around. Come on. Come on. Spirit of God is looking. He's here this morning. Jesus is here. He said, where two or three are gathered in my name, he said, I am there in the midst of them this morning. If you're standing at this altar, watch your bow your head this morning in reverence to the Lord this morning. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is here this morning by his Spirit continue to touch the very life, the soul that he placed within each one of us this morning. Heavenly Father, you see those that have come forward. I ask God that you would answer their petition. Answer each and every prayer that they utter in this place. Let them know of a truth that you are still the same true and living God that lives in heaven and that there is none other than you this morning. In Jesus' name, let us pray. God bless you, sister. Sing that song this morning. Heavenly Father, you're standing at this altar. Why don't you step up your hands this morning? Each one, step them up this morning. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. I want you to pray this morning. Repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you. And Lord, I give my life to you help me to do what you've called me to do and that is to be a son or daughter before you answer my petition look down upon my life and have mercy upon me in Jesus name in Jesus name Amen and amen. Praise him this morning. Don't, no, don't, don't put your hand down. Praise him this morning. Just say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for answering my prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for helping me. For helping me yield myself before you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. way. Lord, have your way in me. Lord, I, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. Hallelujah. Listen, can you hear this morning? I live for you. You are long, every breath. Every breath that I take. Every moment that I'm awake. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way in me. Lord, I give you my Lord, I give you my heart this morning. Help me, God, to walk upright before you, Jesus. Help me to cast myself aside. To throw my pride aside, God. And to live for you, Lord. Help me to be a godly mother. Help me to be a godly father. Help me to be a godly man or woman before you, Jesus. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. Thank you, Jesus.
Jesus for answering every petition here this morning. For every prayer, God. Help each and every soul, God, under the sound of my voice to live according to thine holy word this morning. Lord, have your way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank him this morning before we close. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lamb of God. Lord, for your spirit that's here, God. God, for drawing me, Lord, to this house, to your house. And draw me closer to you each and every day, Lord. Help me, God, Lord, the rest of the week, God, to live for you. Lord, to place you continually in my heart. Your words. God, the word of God, help me to apply them daily to my heart and my life, Lord. That my life, Lord, and God, that others would see of a true that God, that I've been with you this morning all through the week. Thank you, Jesus. This time, I want Joshua Reed to close us in prayer this morning. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Praise God. At this time, I want all the mothers to stand in front. I want the men to go back and sit down, please. All the mothers, stay up here now. Praise God. Is my wife in here? Please grab her. Uh, no. No. <laughs> 